So for example, if you have the ice cube inside like three little things, water is very water is very light. Is the water being No, but the ice cube is very light. Yeah. That's what the answer was. Yes, I'm coming here. All right. Uh, if we can turn to page 24. All the other sitting on sections that they went up to Wait, do we have a Friday or tomorrow? Check it yeah, um, let me talk about uh, the schedule for this week. Uh, we're going to uh, do some additional graphing contents for secant, cosecant, tangent, cotangent. Uh, your, there will be a checking quiz tomorrow. It'll be a little bit short period, but I think with 40 ish minutes, that should be enough for us to get through. Um, the check in quiz. Now, you just picked up a uh, check in quiz review, so take a look at it. Um, it'll be three graphing and one writing equation. Okay, I'm not going to go over it. I feel like I'm going to let you guys work on that on your own or practice as a way of reviewing before the quiz. Today, we're just going to do practice similar to this quiz review, but I want to want to save this quiz review for you guys to take home to work on your own and have it as a, as a mock quiz review, uh, you know, mock quiz before tomorrow. Okay. And, um, but we're gonna cover everything, you know, we're not gonna cover anything new, we're just gonna go over the stuff, uh, the things that that uh, the quiz review will cover, but just to kind of give you an idea of what, um, oh, right here, okay. uh, what your uh, quiz will look like. So you're gonna get uh, one cotangent, one uh, tangent, and then either one of secant or cosecant, because secant and cosecant, uh, we feel like if you can do if you can do sine, you can do cosecant. If you can do cosine, you can do uh, secant. It's just the cotangent and tangent that require that's a little bit different. So um, that you'll see one of each on the clue. Either one of secant or cosecant, then you're going to have to write an equation. Um, but we'll do every one of those types uh, today in class. Okay, uh, the test will be pushed back. I'm not exactly sure which day it'll be. It won't be, it won't be on Friday because we're, we're pushing everything back. So um, if not Monday, then Tuesday. So uh, we'll let you know for sure uh, by tomorrow. Okay, so page 24, any questions about schedule? And then you, you'll get to use your calculator tomorrow as well. So bring your calculator. Okay, so uh, page 24. Uh, we're not going to do one and two just yet. Uh, I wanted to start with cotangent and tangent, but just kind of keep doing quick review here. If we see cosecant, we're going to pretend like we're doing what? Sine. So just do everything in terms of sine, your A, your B, your C, your D. So, so pretend like you're just working on the quiz. In the very end, you draw your D value, you draw your asymptotes uh, that intersects uh, through uh, the curve and the B value, and then you can draw your parabolas. Right? Secants, we're just going to pretend like we're working with what? Cosine. Now do everything in terms of cosine and go from there. Okay. But I want to start us off with um, tangent and cotangent. Those are the ones I feel are more different and that requires more uh, practice, I think, from our end. So go to page 25. Okay. And Hold on, I want to, want, to, want to find a find one that has more things to it. <laughs> sorry, let me uh, let me change it up because I, I want to make sure that it has all the different parts that, that we need to see. So that's sorry, if you guys go to page 23. And we haven't done number seven yet, right? Okay, so um, if you feel like you have enough room, you can uh, definitely just go ahead and uh, start number seven. Uh, I think we'll skip number eight, so we can use all that space uh, for number seven. But if you feel like you need um, if you want a scratch sheet or if you want to pull out a different sheet just to uh, show all that work, you can. But 
we're just going to do seven and skip eight. So you have all the space uh, for you to work. Okay. So uh, let's start off. Page 23. Number seven. So first things first, let's take care of our B value. And look at that fold out in front. One half, okay. Yeah, so sorry, kept jumping around here. We're on page 23. Number seven. And what adjustment do we have to make to counterbalance that one half out here? Two. When the two in the numerator, yeah. Do some cleanup and then we can go through the rest of our problems. OK, so um, now we can pull our uh, A value, our B, our C, and our D. Let's start with our B value. That's the one that takes most work here. But I can go ahead and just list all that out, right? All right, what's our period formula for tangents? Which one is it? Pi over B, yeah. So we talked about how tangent and cotangent are the, are the ones that have a different period formula because it completes a cycle in half the time that sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant does. So that's why it's pi over b. So there's a slight adjustment with our period formula. Okay, interval is still the same, same interval formula. Okay, so now we're ready to start. Um, building our table. Okay, so um, tangents, theta. Sorry, theta first, right? Theta first, and then tangent theta, and then two tangent theta. Now, we talked about this briefly here. Um, well, actually, I don't know if we got into the tangent graph. So the thing with tangent that's different is this. Before you guys write anything else down, don't um, don't fill in that, that side yet. Uh, the thing that's different about tangent is, first off, cotangent starts at zero. It completes a cycle from zero to pi, and it's nice and clean. Vertical asymptote, negative one, zero, sorry, one, zero, negative one, vertical asymptote. And then tangent is a little bit different because if we start at zero, it looks like it's it's kind of a, you know it, I mean it is a full cycle, but it's it's getting interrupted, right? We're doing the second half, we're breaking it down, we're you know that vertical and then we're finishing off the first half, right? So 
um, rather than uh, rather than uh, making it looking like this, we're going to shift the graph a little bit so that we're going to be able to show C involve zero and see the entire cycle uh, from beginning to end. So the, work, the way we're going to deal with tangents is rather than starting at zero and adding our interval, we're going to put our zero in the middle and then we're going to build out on both sides. That way we can ensure that the picture that we get is not something strange like this, it's something that feels more complete where we can see that full cycle on with the asymptote on either side. So that's one adjustment we have to make to a tangent that is going to be unique to just tangent. And it's the fact that instead of starting at with everything else, we start at zero and we build out to the right here. Because I mean, we can, but it's just our graph will look like it's incomplete. So we're going to start zero in the middle, and then we're going to put negatives on the left and positives on the right. So that's what makes, I think, tangent the most involved because we have to um, deal with all these differences uh, compared to um, the other trig functions. So what's our interval? Pi over 2, so let's add pi over 2 to the right. So if I add pi over 2, what do I get? Pi, right? Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is pi. And then because I'm forcing 0 to be in the middle, I'm going to have to go to the negative. So what's going to be to the left of 0? And if I go pi over 2 again to the left, negative pi. OK, so that's how you're going to begin your process that will ensure that we're going to get that vertical asymptote cleanly on both sides. And then our our uh, Y value will just be nice and easy. Negative one, zero, one, because we know tangents going to rise. OK, so. If we do that, then we're going to be able to get a, a clean graph with asymptotes. Um, that's going to bookend both ends of our of our graph. OK, we know cotangent is decreasing, right? And so tangent is going to be the opposite. It's going to increase. So what are the numbers that, that will represent that behavior? Yeah, so we'll start low, go to the middle, and then up to our um, higher value. So that will ensure that negative one, zero, one, our graph is going to be a curved graph that rises. Okay, so that's the biggest adjustment we have to make with tangent. Everything else is going to feel familiar with with all the other ones you've done. Any questions so far? Like, they'll all be like that where you do it in negative square. I'm sorry? So they'll all be like that where you do it in negative square, like tangent? That's right. For tangent, you're always going to force your zero to be in the middle and then two negatives on the left and two positives on the right. That's before the transformation. Now, after the transformation, after the shift, it may be different, but that's how we want to start it. And cotangent is different. Cotangent is different. Cotangent, we're going to start at zero, and then we're going to just add our, our interval just like before. Okay. So everything is going to start at zero on the left and move to the right. But here with tangent, just so that we can see our graph a little bit clearly, the only one that we're going to start are uh, zero in the middle. Yeah. Just like asking if like part of the strategy maps though, you have to like move the zero to the middle. I'm going to ask you to graph it though. Okay. Yeah. OK, so uh, okay, continue on. Multiply everything through by two. Vertical asymptote will not get impacted. You need one more row. Multiply our y values with two to adjust for our new amplitude. And then we're going to shift down as well, so subtract by three. All right, one more thing we need to do is we got to deal with our shift. Which direction are we moving in? Right, high units. 
So that means I got to add, right? I got to add pi to each of my starting values. Okay, uh, top row and bottom row, that's what we're focused on to uh, as we graph. Now, after the shift, everything gets pushed out um, in the positive region, but we always want to start off with zero in the center. And if there's any shift, then we can adjust to that shift. Question. <laughs> Why was it like negative pi to start off at the top in the top row? Why is it right? Because um, everything else we're going to start with zero, and then we're going to because everything else we've we've done we've started at zero on the left right and moved to the right. But here for tangent we prefer to have the zero start in the middle, and the reason why is because um, if we did if we didn't our graph will look kind of strange. It will look like this where our asymptote is going to be interrupting our graph. So to make it so that our graph is a little bit cleaner, a little bit prettier, if we can force that zero to be in the center, then our asymptote will be cleanly on the left. And if we do that, then our second row will be very nice and clean. It'll be asymptote, asymptote on both sides. It'll be negative one, zero, one, rather than like, you know, zero or zero, one, vertical asymptote, negative one, where it just, it just feels awkward with uh, with that second row not uh, feeling like it's bookended with vertical process. Yeah, so yeah. making a shift to make it easy for our graphing. That's it. That's why. Okay, so uh, order pairs here at pi over two, we can go down to negative five. At pi, we'll be at negative three, which is our midline, right? That's our center. And then at three pi over two, we're going to be all the way up at negative one. Okay, tangent graph is going to rise. All you're going to do on the quiz is just to create one cycle, one, um, one cycle. Now, there's also something that you need to be able to do on the quiz, and that's to be able to write your your um, your domain um, slash vertical asymptote uh, notation. So um, you're going to be asked to find the vertical asymptote. So this is what you do. With vertical asymptote, you find your first asymptote. Furthest left you see, which is where? Zero. Zero. And you're going to figure out um, how far you have to move to get to the next subinterval. Now, this one is obvious, right? I can just keep adding two pi. but Let's say you're dealing with fractions where you're not exactly, no, you don't know exactly what that distance is. You can just always subtract your, your um, next asymptote with your first asymptote. So here, 2 pi minus 0 is 2 pi. So that's going to be your interval. So you're going to add your interval and attach an end to it because there's more than one, right? I'm going to keep adding 2 pi. If I keep adding 2 pi, I'm going to get to my next interval. And I want n to be a nice, whole number. I don't want it to be a decimal, so I'm going to have to say n is an element of an integer. We're going to do that every time um, whenever there's a vertical, vertical asymptote. Okay. 
So it's always going to be your starting plus whatever your interval is, or whatever, sorry, your, well, sorry, not your interval, whatever your next the location of your next, um, or the distance, sorry, the distance to your next vertical asymptote. And the way you can do that, you can always just subtract these two x values, and that will give you your distance. And then we have to increment um, by n, n uh, times 2 pi to get to our next interval, and then to indicate that n is an inner here. So that's the way we write it. Question? Would that always be our period? Like, is it always the same? Uh, oh, I mean, it's always going to be 2 pi? Or no, like, like just our period, like, uh, like the vertical asymptote in the period after all. Oh, okay. Um, Yes, it is. Um, but that's only going to be the case with cotangent and tangent. With everything else, it's going to be half the period. So I feel like the easier way to do it is just subtract the two distances, and you're always going to be able to get that right number. Okay. Rather than have to memorize, oh, wait, uh, yeah, it is a period, but then sometimes it's half the period. Yes, question. Yeah, like, um, that is a good question. But like, yeah, keeping the symbol, no, you can say negative to positive infinity. Yeah. But on the quiz, it'll be asked about, it'll, I'll ask for vertical asymptote, and then you're just going to say x equals your starting plus the distance to the next interval, next asymptote, and include the n, and n um, is an element of the n. Yes. Okay, also, going back to like the first row, um, why do you start get the interval 5 or 2? Why do we start with it? Oh. That's after that's after the, the shift, right? After the shift, anything can happen. But like before the shift, like the, isn't the interval like pi over two? It is pi over two, right? So minimum. I'm adding pi over two to the right. So what's pi over two plus pi over two? Pi, right? And then subtracting. Subtracting one pi, pi over two, subtracting pi over two, I get negative pi. Yeah. Yes, question. Right, this is both for all real. Oh, all real numbers. Um, you put uh, two vertical bars. And then just a big R next to it. Okay. All right. Uh, so that is the the thing we have to watch out for with tangent. You got to start with zero, and then and then uh, let that be your starting point of your of your table. Okay. Uh, let's do one cotangent, and let's do number five. Okay. So number five, we're gonna put this on a separate sheet as well. OK, so first things first. Pull that B value out. And how do we counterbalance that four outside the parentheses? Denominator, right? Four is up top, so I need a four below. Okay, list out all your A, B, C, and D's. Again, for cotangent, what's the period formula? Pi over B, right? Only for cotangent and tangent, we have to slightly adjust the period formula. Everything else is 2 pi over B. Cosine, sine, secant, cosecant, they're all, they're all 2 pi over B. But the interval formula is the same for everything, P over 4.
So, where do we start with cotangent? Start at zero. Okay. So, cotangent, we start at zero. It's only tangent that we got to force that zero to be in the center. But everything else, we're going to be starting on the left side, zero. Okay. Add your interval. Okay, what do we have on either ends of our cotangent? Vertical asymptote. Remember, tangent is increasing, right? And cotangent is decreasing. So what are our starting numbers here? One, zero, negative one. Cotangent is decreasing. So you're gonna, from left to right, you want your numbers to decrease. Yes. Because cotangent is uh, a little cleaner, cotangent starts its um, cycle at zero, and and it, it's a little bit cleaner, a little prettier. Uh, but tangent, but if we start at zero, we're going to get interrupted by the asymptote, and it just feels awkward to graph this. So that's why we shift that zero to be in the center to allow for our graph to to look more like this. It's just so that. OK, now if you do that on the quiz and you still get the graph right, I won't take any points off. I just feel like students typically like to look at a full cycle without being interrupted with the asymptote in the center. But having said that, if you if you went from zero to to the period and, and your asymptote is in the right place, I won't I won't take off any points. But I think it is students prefer that's that uh, full cycle and having you know, having that second row being similar, I think is also helpful. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to put asymptotes on, on both ends, uh, like how we did with this cotangent here. But we do need to make that adjustment with that first row in order for everything else to be a little bit a little bit cleaner. OK, good. Any other questions? Um, difference, are we comfortable with that difference between cotangent and tangent? Okay. All right. Notice that there is no A value, or there is an A value. But there's no uh, uh, stretch, so we don't have to multiply these numbers with anything. We can just go directly to adding that two. You can use your calculator, but I'm just going to match the denominator because pi over 8 is the same thing as 2 pi over 16. So. I just added the fractions and I just reduced it if I could. But you can also make the calculator do all the adding the fractions for you. OK, uh, we should be ready to go here. Everything we should be ready for our graphing. Uh, at 3 power 16, I want to be up at 3, and my D value is 2. So 
um, your cotangent is going to start high and work its way down. Uh, we also need to write our vertical asymptote statement. So, okay. So let's practice what well, we talked about before. Vertical asymptote. What's the first asymptote that you see? All right. Plus, now we got to find the distance to the next interval. The easiest way to do that is just take. The next uh, asymptote, that, asymptote that you see, and you just subtract these two values, and that will be the distance that's going to be uh, between every asymptote. So, uh, what's three pi over eight minus pi over eight? Three pi over eight, which is pi over four, right? So you can say plus pi over four n. Now it is the same as your period, but it's not always the case with across all the uh, secant and cosecant. So you can adjust. You can think of it as oh, cotangent and and uh, sorry, cotangent and tangent uh, has interval of period, and the secant and cosecant is period divided by two. But I think the the, the maybe the more clear way is just just subtract the two numbers, and you're always going to be able to get your distance. Okay. And then just include that statement. N is an element of an integer. We want to restrict N to just be nice whole numbers. Okay, let's do one of either secant or cosecant. So, yes. Oh, can you write the domain? Oh, right. Uh, yeah, domain is, is similar. Domain is just all real numbers except. The statement above. The domain just says all real numbers except all these asymptotes that I need to list out. Okay. Um, Let's go to page 24. Let's do a cosecant one. Let's do number uh, one on page 24. Because on the review key, uh, review sheet, I put a secant one. So I figured that we'll just do a cosecant one so we can be able to see everything. So page 24, number one. So just like what we said before, if you see co if you see cosecant, you're thinking what? Thinking sign, right? You're thinking sign and doing everything. Pretend like you're just starting with sign. So I wouldn't mind if you just did, you know, rewrote the problem. So that it looked like sign, and and then that way it's it feels more familiar, and it, that way you can just oh it just feels like oh I'm just doing a um, my first part is going to feel like the quiz um, problem that I've seen that I've seen before. We have to make an adjustment because I'm pulling a four out in front. Four is in the numerator, so I need a four in the denominator.
Okay, what's our period formula? Good. You're, if, you, if you look at that sign, that should help remind you, right? Oh, okay, back to my original here. Phase shift, I'm moving to the left, pi over 8, so minus pi over 8. Okay, where does sign begin? 0, 1, 0, negative 1. No stretch, no uh, vertical shift. Have to do a little bit of fake shit. Okay, remember, you're not going to show the sign graph as your graph, right? So everything is in the background. So we need dotted lines or something faint so that I'm so you're not seeing the sign and the cosecant graph all in, you know the same graph uh, on the same uh, tone, right? So I need to see that distinction that I want you to show me that it's really the parabolas that we're after. And then the sign graph is really the background to kind of help our boundaries of our um, cosecant graph. Midline is zero, hasn't changed. But it's important to note that we are going to see asymptotes, and the asymptote is going to be where that D value is going to intersect with your sign graph or your, or your imaginary sign graph. So where does the, the dotted lines intersect? First one is where? Pi over 8. Or else? Pi over 8. Or else? Or pi over 8. Now, all this is in the background, but it's very helpful because now we know exactly where these, these parabolas are going to go. Right. They're just going to kind of reflect off of the peaks and valleys of these imaginary sign graph that we have in front of us. And the asymptotes tells us how wide to make these parabolas, right? So I need you to show me that's the foreground and everything else is the background. But if you do everything with the same um, stroke, then I'm not going to see that distinction, and I'm not. I'm going to think that 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 you think uh, the sign is part of the cosine graph. Okay, so let's also go ahead and write our vertical asymptote statement. Where's the first vertical asymptote that you see? Negative, right? Negative power eight, right? Now, what's the distance between the, the asymptotes? We can do one eighth minus negative one eighth, or we can do three eighths minus one eighth. What's that distance? 
power of four, right? So three eighths minus one eight is is uh, two over eight, which is one fourth pi. So you can say pi over four n, right? Because that's the distance that will help that that separates each of the vertical asymptotes. On the quiz, I'm going to write it out as vertical asymptote. So you're going to, so it's going to be like the quiz review. If you look at the quiz review, it's going to be laid out the same way. Sine and cosine has no vertical asymptotes. For secant and cosecant, it is where your sine, your imaginary sine graph, intersects with your D value. So if you draw that dotted line and the curve is dotted line, wherever they intersect, those are going to be where you're going to drop your asymptotes. OK, uh, let's do one uh, where you have to write uh, an equation. So why don't we look at number nine on page 25, bottom of the page. Cotangent function has a period of 3 pi. Shift it pi over 2 units to the right and shift it up 4 units. Okay, so ultimately you're going to write this equation. Okay, period is 3 pi. So again, let's make sure we are clear. What's the period formula for cotangents? B. Only cotangent and tangent has pi over b. Secant, cosecant are related to sine and cosine, so there are the other four have the original two pi. Okay, Oh, you mean all this out? Yeah. No, you don't have to. I just wanted to show all the work associated with it, but if you can jump to this, I'm fine with it. Okay. Any questions? Oh, uh -huh. is there any way like graph like the, the equation that we get? No. Uh, so tomorrow you're going to have three graphing and one where you got to write the equation. Okay. So if you look at the quiz review, it'll laid out just like that. You'll get a, a cotangent, a tangent. Either a secant or cosecant, and then you're going to have to to uh, write a statement for one of the other possible. So tonight, I encourage you guys to work through that that quiz review that I made for you. Uh, tomorrow, our class is a little bit shortened, so as soon as you come in, I'm going to start giving you the quiz. Okay, I want to make sure you have plenty of time. We've got 40 minutes for four problems. I think that should be enough time. Oh, okay. 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 oh, Guys, on your uh, real quick here on the quiz review, number two, I made a correction on the key. 
the key is correct um, because I realized that I've created the problem that that B value didn't work out very nicely. So I worked it out correctly on the key. So you can uh, copy number two. I, I made a mistake that copy two should be two uh, was two over five, but it's correct on the key. So rewrite your problem for number two matching the keys problem number two. Okay. And the second thing is increments is interval. So you'll see. I'll, I'll probably change it to interval. Increments is interval, so that's just your interval that you're going to place. So for number two, on the original worksheet, the problem is it needs to be readjusted. It's not quite right, but the key is correct. Those are much less on chemistry. I think. Okay. 